I am in the hospital again, but in much, <laughs> but in much better health than I was la last admitted. <laughs> I have been seeing a decline in a variety of my sim symptoms. Good morning. I brought my camera and I'm excited because it's really pretty. Everyone's waking up, walking around, and I love long exposure shots but you need a tripod for them to work perfectly. I got everything set up. I put the camera on a self timer so I wouldn't have touched it to shake it. And I just have to hope 10 seconds after I click it, everything looks good. Um, but I've been having fun with that. Today has been pretty crazy. There is a doctor who's been on my treatment team that I haven't personally met yet, but I know my specialist has been discussing a lot of things with her and I finally got to meet her. It was really funny. She came in to talk to me and there were like 12 other people who came in um, to, to watch everything. Uh, I think they're maybe like residents or s some sort of students of hers. And I also got to sign a bunch of papers consenting to use of the tests that we conduct and fluids and such for research purposes as well. So I'm really glad that I'm getting to do, do, do that. Um, they're, they're trying to take me off the scopolamine patch to see what happens. And I've already started, started to get really nauseous. Um, and then we're also taking me off of the Ambien. We need to do an MRI and a spinal tap to reassess and like see if things have changed. Okay. Top down, right side of the screen, or uh, sorry, left side of the screen is the right side of your brain. Wow. And everything looks pretty normal. You have a brain, so that's good. It's just so cool to see it. That one's mine. Oh my gosh, are those my eyeballs? Yep. Eyes, ears would be out here. And right here, so this is your brain stem and this is uh, the cerebellum. This is the balance area of your brain. So that's what I'm looking very closely at. Even though we, you have impairments that kind of point to the cerebellum, we're not seeing structural damage. Sometimes early, like in August, we might not have seen what we call atrophy or shrinking down of the cerebellum back then because it was happening so soon. But the good news is we repeat this MRI, you know, six, seven months later, and we're still not seeing structural damage. So it's not permanent mm -hmm. damage, at least that we can see with the naked eye on the yeah. scan. Wow. Okay. That so that's good news. So that's why I, I think you have room for improvement. Uh, I forgot to mention this and I just wanted to add it in because I thought this was so cool. That first day I was talking to my nurse, somehow music got brought up and she was like, what do you listen to? And I was like, uh, it's all over the place. Like it's really, I've got some whack music taste. And she brought me back this post-it note called whack hospital jams. So if you're in the hospital looking for some whack hospital jams, boy. Do I have the playlist for you? But yeah, I just thought that was really sweet. <laughs> can I help you? Um, can I just get more nausea medication? Start the IVIG again today. I had a dose of it last night. With, it's through it's through the IV. We're gonna do it again tonight and tomorrow. So just three days of IVIG and then a high dose of rituxin. A couple weeks after this, I should get another dose of rituxin. Kind of just depends when we can get that all sorted with um, insurance. And that might be it. That might be it for my treatment. Look who came to visit. <gasps> we, we tried. We tried to get me off of the scopolamine patch. That that was not going well. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing okay. I, I don't have the scope patch and we're trying to treat the nausea with different oral medications and it's not working super well. <laughs> so I feel quite a lot worse, but I'm not really any worse. Don't have the the symptoms being masked right right now. I got, I got her back today. 
but even now I'm still nauseous. I don't know, maybe it just is taking time to kick in. When I leave here, the goal is that I'll only be actively taking the scopolamine patch, zofran, and clonopin. Clonopin I have not been taking. It is a benzodiazepine. It can help with the myoclonus. I'm quite out of it taking it. I really hate how it makes me feel. Um, so hopefully I don't need to be taking that often. I will also still be taking the oral steroids when I leave, but we will begin tapering them off as the rituxan begins to take effect. This is one thing I realized I didn't really explain. So the IVIG doesn't work super long term. It will help for like a couple weeks and then start to go down, but the rituxan takes a couple weeks to kick in. I did the rituxan immediately after these IVIG treatments. We're hoping that when the IVIG peaks and starts to decline in its effectiveness, it's like around the same time that the rituxan starts to take effect and there's this like cross in the graph, IVIG going down, rituxan coming up. Uh, so that way my symptoms are treated. Yesterday we did a spinal tap, which was quite the ordeal. It was horrible. They kept trying to numb me, but I was getting numb in my face and upper back, not in my lower back, below my spinal cord, where they need to do the tap. And eventually I just had to kind of tough it and it was so painful. It, it was bad. I had a spinal tap previously in my previous hospital stay and it was fine, but, and I was very, very sore yesterday. Today I'm feeling much better. I've been taking Benadryl, Zyrtec, the scopolamine patch, and an antihistamine nasal spray every day. And I guess that is far too many antihistamines. Those seem to be the only things that are working to treat certain sy sy symptoms. Like if I don't take the Benadryl in the past, my throat would like swell and close up. Any symptoms that are still stubborn and sticking around by the end of this year, I was told I could pretty much count on being fa fa fairly permanent. So I'm really hoping I can start driving again soon. But now I know if I can't, that I need to move somewhere with very good public transportation. That's really all I have for today. I'm I'm really not feeling feeling well. I will try to give more give more updates when I'm a bit more a bit more awake and feeling a bit better. Today it is snowing, though it's kind of hard to tell. Put in my IV blue, and I'm gonna have to get a new one. Today is my la last day here. We are about to do the rituxan infusion. That's the type of chemotherapy that I have previously mentioned uh, that's sometimes used for autoimmune issues. It is editing Lizzie here with a correction. I do not know if it is chemotherapy. If you first Google, is rituxan a type of chemotherapy? You get immediately, rituxan is not a type of chemotherapy. But then you scroll down a little and immediately you also see people saying it is a type of chemotherapy. That is what my doctor told me. I have no idea. Regardless, it is a medication that can be used to treat cancers alone or in conjunction with other chemotherapies. Not trying to mislead anyone here though, it's just uh, that's just a drug I took. But it is a very different process than but then when it's used for like a cancer, uh, it should be a lot milder of an experience. I am feeling very nauseous and I have a really, really bad headache. We'll potentially do a third rituxan treatment maybe like six months from now, just depending on how everything is going. But after that, there's really not much more that can be, be done. And it'll be just learning to cope with what I'm left with. Honestly, at this point, I don't care if I don't if I don't um, move, move the same or speak the same. I just want to not be nauseous and dizzy ever again. Or have this headache, Jesus. I'm so excited to be going home and so grateful to finally be getting these treatments. It's just been such a nightmare trying to get help from my insurance. You know, they let me decline to a point that I needed to be readmitted to the hospital. And that's gonna cost them a lot more, so that's um, it's that's its own karma. 
to United Healthcare PPO. <laughs> there it is. My bag of life. Okay, embarrassing story. So my nurse has to come in every 15 minutes to check my vitals because I'm actively receiving the chemo. She comes in, checks my blood pressure, everything's fine, walks out the door, and as she's walking out the door, for some reason I said, I'll miss you. Why would I say that? And now I need to flee. How do I sneak out of the hospital with my IV? <laughs> I can never see her again. It's like when I called my third grade teacher mom by mistake. But that was weirder because she was like, you can call me mom. And I was like, oh God, no, I just, it was a, it was a glitch. It was a glitch. I did it. Now I just gotta pack up the copious amount of snacks I brought. And we're going home. We're having a headache, Jesus. I am feeling very nauseous. I have a really, really bad headache. Yesterday we did a spinal tap, which was quite the ordeal. It was horrible. Okay, so I am back in the hospital once again. I did finish the IVIG and Rituxan and everything was fine with those, but they did a repeat spinal tap the first day to compare my results with when I was in the hospital previous. And it seems there was <laughs> some complications with that and now I have a spinal fluid leak. And so we are back once again to get a blood patch to stop the leak been poked a lot <laughs> and um, a little worn down from that but anyways this is something I didn't know about when you get a spinal tap I guess you're pretty at risk of getting these leaks but yeah this is new for me I never knew much about the complications of spinal taps but if you ever get one and you have a leak you will have the worst migraine ever of all of them hope you don't have to deal with that ever hopefully this gets rid of mine if I lay down, I'm okay, but as soon as I sit up, it's game over. <laughs> the light sensitivity is up, the nausea is up, the dizziness, and my head throbs. So, there we go. Uh, thank you guys. Hello, enjoy the footage of whatever is playing right now. It is just super dark, so it's not even worth filming myself. But I'm finishing up this video and I realized I just forgot to add. I have set up a subscriptions thing on Instagram. I believe it's very similar to like OnlyFans or Patreon, where basically all you're doing is p paying for exclusive content. And I am putting some stuff up there and health updates as they come. Honestly, I, I'm not using it much, but I've had just so many people ask about anything they can do to support. I don't have like a fixed number uh, for my bills yet and all that stuff, but I can't work like normal because of the inconsistency in my body and all of that. So anyways, I th thought that that would be a nice way that made a little more sense for me. So anyways, if you would like to see what I am up to and all of my little side things or you just want to be supportive, you can go to my Instagram and subscribe there. And if not, if you really just do not want to do that but you want to be supportive, um, just like, comment, and subscribe and that gets my videos out there. So anyways, thank you again so much, you guys. Making these videos and just having an outlet has been so helpful.